Hi, I'm Cindy Cloud with Riley Blake Designs and welcome to our RBD Building Block Series. This is our second series where we previously did nine basic blocks. We have nine more blocks for you to learn how to make. So we're going to start with this four patch shoe fly block, a classic block from the late 1800s. And then we're just gonna go one block at a time. So if you're new to quilting, this is the perfect series to learn these basic blocks. But if you're a longtime quilter, just sew along with us as maybe we have a twist on an old favorite. So the first thing you're going to do is download the four patch shoe fly block pattern on our Riley Blake Designs website. It has the cutting instructions. And I previously cut out all my pieces and I've labeled them and now we're ready to get started on our quilt block. So the first thing that we need to do is take our B pieces and locate the back side of your fabric. Now I'm using the, our new dapple dot. It's very subtle, these little speckled dots on top. So I want to make sure I have the right side. So that's the back side. I'm going to draw corner to corner marking my block. This is going to be my sew guide, not my sew line. Oh. Let me try that again. Okay, then we're going to take our C squares and put them right sides together, just like that. I'm gonna give them a quick press, but then this is my guide and I'm gonna sew a fourth inch on each side of this line, making two half square triangles. Now when I press this, it creates just a temporary adhesive, gets out, irons it together, and it just uh, makes the fabric adhere together really nicely. Okay, so now I'm going to clip my threads in between. And your drawn line now becomes your cutting line. So you're cutting right down the middle between those two threads. Let's go press these open. I'm pressing to the dark side. So I just kind of open them up. Now be careful when you're pressing um, half square triangles that you don't um, get to your block out of alignment if you're pressing off grain. So I just kind of come onto it like that. Let it cool underneath the clapper. Again, when I'm pressing, I usually put the, the dark side up top. Kind of open it up with my finger. Take the nose of the iron. Give it a good press. Because you can see there's a bias. It can tend to stretch. I don't tend to add water when I'm pressing. Sometimes just a good, nice hot iron is the perfect thing. Just gonna open that up. And now let's square them up. When, if you're new to quilting, um, if you square up your blocks and each step, it makes for a better finished block that's more accurately sewn and um, all the parts are the right size. So we need to square it up four and a half inches. And 
let me get up my square up ruler. These cute cut trim it rulers, they're just perfect. What you do is you lay it on top of your block. Do you see that diagonal line? You line that up on the center of your half square triangle. And anything outside of your ruler, you're going to trim off. And these rotating mats are perfect when you're trimming up your block because you can just rotate it around and get those dog ears the side of your blocks. Okay, so now this is the perfect half square triangle. Put that over there. Let's trim up the rest of our little half square triangles. Now we'll put those aside. And we're going to make our little four patch. We're going to take our D squares and our E squares. And it's just a slightly dark purple. Just put them right sides together. Flip that over. I tend to give them a quick press and just sew down each side. Okay, let's bring it back here. Now you don't need to cut the threads between these two units because this is what we're going to sew them together. Now you can finger press your seams to the dark side. Finger press on this side. Or you can take it to your pressing station and give it a good press, but I can do a quick finger press there. Now I'm going to nest my two units together. And since my uh, seams are going opposite directions, it does it beautifully. You can stick a pin in there if you'd like. Pin your two ends. And then you're just going to sew down using a fourth inch seam allowance from top to bottom. Okay, our little four patch is finished. What you want to see with a four patch is your blocks are all lined up in the center. So point to point, point to point, uh, the corner of those squares. That looks great. Now you can press um, this to one side, which is perfectly fine to do. Or you can do, this is a little bit of a technique that sometimes I do, and I feel like I've got too much bulk at this intersection. I'm going to flip these two seams opposite, and I'm just going to open up that seam those threads are just a little bit loose, so you can open up that seam just like that. And those threads will just loosen up. You can even do a little clip, not into the actual quilt block, but just those threads on top. There we go. And now this is going to lie very, very flat. So you kind of create this little four patch in the middle where these are flipping the opposite direction. Those are opposite. And now you have a quilt block that lies very flat. Whichever way you choose to press, you're in charge of your quilt. But our four patch is ready to go. Just make sure it doesn't need to be trimmed at all. Lining up the seams on those lines. 
and really there's just a small amount of threads. Okay, that's ready to go. Okay, it's time to lay out our quilt block. Now the shoe fly block was so popular because it looked great, but it really was so easy to create. So you put these half square triangles facing towards the center, which is kind of the shoe fly, kind of like the flies facing into the center. I like to think that as maybe an apple pie or something they were trying to get at. Okay, find your right side up. I love this new dapple dot. So fun, it's just kind of a random dot. It's a new basic that we have. It's really nice to work with. Okay, there we go. So this is what our block looks like laid out. And now I'm going to start sewing it all together. I flip the inside block to that outer. Just like that. And I'm gonna sew down, I'm gonna start here and just sew down all of these, all of our units together. We've got that first section sewn. Let's open it up. Make sure it's all going the right way. There we go. Now these outside squares, blocks, units, we're gonna flip over towards the center. Now since I've got more things to take to the machine, this is when I'm going to pin it. And I usually just pin it on one side. Right, let's put it over here. Let's open it up. It's looking good. Now we just have two more seams to sew and our first block is finished. Now, before I press, I look and see where the blocks naturally want to fall. And this wants to go this wants to open up. This wants to go towards the center. So this is going to go on the outside and then that allows me to nest my seams. You could give it a quick press or just kind of finger press at that intersection, just flipping your two seams opposite ways so they nest really well. So that nests there. Slide that way. When you nest your seams, it just allows those points to match up perfectly. Okay, so we'll flip it over here. Again, that wants to go that direction. And the shoe fly block is really one of my favorite blocks. In fact, I have an old vintage quilt that I made out of blocks given to my mother when she was getting married and they were the shoe fly blocks. So this, this quilt block has a special place in my heart. Okay, one more. Okay, 
your block is finished, let's give it a good press. And then we're gonna square it up. Sometimes I give it a nice little spritz at this point. Okay, and the quilt block is almost finished. We just need to see if we need to square it up at all, trim any of the block off. It's gonna be unfinished 12 and a half inches. So I have a trim it ruler that size. I lay it down on top, line all my seams up. And besides a few threads on the outside, there's really not much to trim up. It's the right size, which is what we want. Now, it's, it is important to note that your points on all your half square triangles, you've got a fourth an inch for a seam allowance. So when you sew them together with the other blocks, put your sashing on that those points don't get cut off. So make sure Give it a look that you've got a fourth inch from your tip to the outside edge of, of your quilt block on all of these points. And your four patch shoe fi block is finished. This is a favorite block of mine. I hope it's now a favorite block of yours. Join us next time in the RBD Building Block series as we work on the bow tie block.